In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a basic structure. Now, the basic structure that we're talking about here is basically just any non-moving object, something like a house or, in this case, a building. We're going to use polygons to create our structure, and we'll start with a primitive cube. So I'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube. Now, I want to put the cube on top of my grid plane, and we'll use that grid plane just as kind of the artificial floor. So to do so, I want to move the pivot point of my cube to the base of its geometry. I'll hit W just to bring up my Move tool, and I'm also going to hit F just to frame everything up here and get a little closer to my object. Then I'm going to hold D as in dog, and V as in Victor to snap to point, and I'll drag this down in the Y axis and just drag it to a single vert. That way it is now centered at the base of my object. And I only dragged that down in the Y axis. Then I'm going to hold X and snap that to the top of my grid. Now I have the pivot point at the base of my object. And my object is sitting on top of my XZ plane or my grid plane. I want to add additional geometry here, and I also want to increase the overall size or scale of my cube. I'm going to do this by manipulating my construction history. I'm going to go to Polygon Cube as my input. This is my construction history node here. And let's change the width, and I'll just click on that value, and we'll enter 5 for the overall width, 10 for the height, and 5 for the depth to keep that in a nice square shape. And let's zoom out here. And let's change the subdivision width, height, and depth to match the overall scale. So I'll just enter the same values here, 5, 10, and 5. And now I get a nice even division of polygons across the entire object. And since those divisions match the scale, they're all evenly spaced, so I have very uniform quads in my object. Now, changing the object there, I just lost my pivot point. I'm just going to repeat that process. I'll hold D to go into that pivot point mode, grab it in the Y, and just drag it down to the very last vert. And I'm snapping to any one of those verts. It really doesn't matter. We're just dragging it down. It could be this vertex here. It could be this vertex doesn't matter. They're all on that same XZ plane. And we'll bring this up and snap that to the top. There we go. And we've got a good base here for our building structure. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete one of these bottom loops here. Actually, I think we'll go ahead and take out two of these loops, and I'm going to double click. I'll hold Shift and double click again. And I'm also going to just hit Q to get rid of that Move tool, just so we can see things a little bit better. And I want to delete all of that geometry out of there, but I just want to get rid of those edge loops. I don't want to lose my faces that are through there. So to cleanly get rid of those edge loops, I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, and under Edge, I'll choose Delete Edge Vertex. Notice, too, that the hotkey there is Control and Delete. And we'll just choose that, and that gets rid of those edges but it also gets rid of the associated vertices, so we don't have those lingering around either. I'm going to undo that real quick and just show you too. If I just hit delete on the keyboard and not choose control delete or delete edge vertex, it looks like the same thing has happened, but look at my pre-selection. The edges are broken up. There's more than a single straight edge there, and if I go to vertex, I can see that none of those vertices got deleted. That's going to be our major difference there. So I'm going to back that up, just undo, and I'll hit Control Delete that time, and we'll go back to Edges. Now I have solid edges through there. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Okay, let's add some windows to our building. And to do this, I'm going to switch to an orthographic view. Go to our front view here first. I'm going to right click. Go to Face, and I'm going to draw a marquee. And by doing that, I get 
both faces on either side selected. So I'm doing that as opposed to just clicking on that single face. I'm drawing the marquee, which will go through the entire object and select both faces on either side. That'll save me a little bit of time and I'll switch to the side view and we'll do the exact same thing. Okay, and now that effectively selects all of the faces going around the entire object there for my windows. With those faces selected, I'm gonna choose Edit Mesh and go down to the Face portion of my menu and choose Extrude. And let's zoom up just to a face here, get a little bit closer to it. And I'm gonna grab the Z axis, that's my blue axis, and we'll translate that in. Notice that we also have a scale manipulator here. I just wanna grab the arrow, which is my translate or move tool. And when I move that in, that will affect all of the faces that I've extruded. And it will affect them locally. This way we get the same translation happening on every face. And we'll just shift those in a bit. And if I wanted to lock that down to a specific value, I can look in my channel box and I have local translate Z, negative 0.097. We can just do negative 0.1. That way we have a nice rounded value there. That gives me just a little bit of thickness there. And let's go to object mode and we can see it a little bit better. And we just have the start of some windows. Let's add a division now where the building kind of separates. So the bottom half here, this would kind of be the doors, the front entrance and stuff. And then we'll create a division up at the top here to separate from the windows to the bottom floor. To add that division, I'm going to first create an edge loop. And I'll first go up to Mesh Tools. And I'll choose Insert Edge Loop Tool. And we'll click on this. And I'm going to left click and hold. And then I can drag this anywhere within that edge boundary. So I'm going to scoot this down and we're just going to guess at an overall thickness there. And when I'm done, I'll just let go of the mouse button and that will create the edge loop for me. And let's switch and go now to faces and I will select a face, hold shift, double click and get the edge loop. Now I can extrude that edge loop. So I'll go back to edit mesh. Face, Extrude. Now I'm going to pull this out just like we did with our windows. Pull that out, but notice what happens. When I start to drag that out, they're not pulling out uniformly. And this happens because we have an angle right here. So the distance is different than the distance between here and here or along any one of these straight lines that we have going through here. I don't really want that. I want it to be nice and square. So I'm going to undo that, just bring it back. I'm going to keep my extrude so I won't undo too far, but I'll keep that extrude. And instead of grabbing the Z axis here, I'm going to use the floating window out here and use the thickness attribute. If I click on the word thickness and then scroll left to right, it will pull out uniformly so that it maintains that thickness across the extrusion. Now when I do this, this tends to go a little fast. This is because of the scale that I'm currently working in. If it was a larger object, it wouldn't scale so extremely here or pull out so quickly. I'm going to undo that again. And this time I'm going to hold Control and then click on Thickness. And notice what happens to the number values. When I press Control and then click, my number values decrease and now I'm moving in increments of 0.01. As before, when I let go of control, I'm moving at 0.1. So a big difference there, and I can interactively do this. I can just hold control, let go of control, hold control in order to, in effect, gain control over my thickness. Pull this out and we'll just pull that out to 0 0.1, 0 0.11's fine. We can also go in and just type in the value right there as well. There, so now we've got just a little bit of a division there. Makes it look a little nicer. Let's jump up to the roof, and we'll just add a little bit of something here. 
I'm going to select all the faces for the top of the roof. I don't want these extras, but it's easier for me just to select a bunch and then deselect what I don't want. That just gives me the top there. And we'll go to Edit Mesh, and I'll choose Extrude. And I'm going to lift this up just a bit. And we want to lift that up, actually, to point 0.1. That way it matches the other stuff that I'm doing down here. And let's select that entire edge loop. And I'm going to extrude this edge loop as well. But I'm not going to go through my menu. This time I'm just going to hit G, G on the keyboard. And that way it'll automatically repeat my last command. And let's add a thickness. And again, we know that thickness. We want to match it. So I'm going to make that 0.1. Then I want to select all of these interior faces. I'm going to switch to my paint select tool. We'll get the bigger brush and we'll just grab a bunch of these. Got a little extra there. And there we go. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. And now let's scale this in a bit. And I'll extrude again. And I'll just pull this straight down just to create a little bit of a surface up there for our roof. And now we have just a real basic building. We could come down here if we wanted to and add a door. Let's grab a couple of faces here. And before I add that door, I'm going to delete the bottom of the geometry so that it won't get in my way. Let's just make sure we're not deleting anything extra. We'll just hit delete. I'm going to turn the grid off just so I can see things a little better. Now, I could go ahead and insert another edge loop here, but I think I'll just select those three faces and let's do another extrude. And I'm going to bring this down a bit, and to do so, I'm going to use offset. And we'll bring this down to about the size of our doors. And that offset is keeping those faces inside of my other ones there. And let's just bring this down to the floor, and we can move our pivot point here as well. I'm going to hold D and convert my selection. Let's just grab those and go to vertices. All right, hold D and we'll just drag this down to the bottom of my verts there. And then we'll drag this to the floor. Now I did sandwich a couple of vertices in there. We'll take care of that in just one second, but let's grab all these faces here. And we'll do a quick extrude and just push that in. And then I can go back and select these faces and delete them. And then there you can still see I've got one sandwiched in there. So if I go to face, I want to select a bunch of that just to make sure I get it. And now notice I still have three faces selected there all along the base there. And we'll just delete those. And now that makes it a little cleaner. And we'll take a look. Let's just go to object mode. There we go. We have a real basic structure, just a basic building. We used our extrude tool and our insert edge loop tool just to flesh that out. And we could continue and just start adding more detail with some of our other polygon tools.